Welcome to the Self Made Interview Series. I'm Bianca. And I'm Byron. And today we're speaking to the lovely Mayfair, who, when I spoke to her earlier, said she's not only a podcaster, an author, a life and business coach, but also a speaker. So, I mean, look, you're a woman of many talents. I mean, this is one way to start a podcast and an interview series. So, so I want to hear it. I want to understand the story. So tell yeah. me a little bit about you and your background. Mm -hmm. um, so I was actually never interested in business. I didn't see myself going into business. My goal was pretty much get a good degree in law. I'm from an African household, so law was encouraged. Um, so I went to Exeter 2016. And again, like the plan was just to continue with it, get a good grades, get a good city law firm job, make a lot of money. And then in my second year, I kind of reached a point of rock bottom, like various things just happened. I was engaged and that fell apart and things basically fell apart. So I reached a point where I think a lot of the times you're too distracted to kind of ask yourself the big questions, like what do I actually want from life? But when all of that's removed, you have to. So I started asking myself, like, what do I actually want from life? Like, what would give me meaning? Um, and then I realized, like, I loved hearing about people's dreams. Like, I love when someone talks about something they want to do and their eyes light up. So from there, I was just like, okay, cool. How can I help people do that? Mm. Um, and I just continued to ask that question. And then slowly things just started to unravel. So shortly after that, I started writing my first book, The Becoming. Um, and then randomly, the day after I wrote that book, one of my good friends, she asked me to be her life coach. I was just giving her advice about like university and it was the most random thing. Um, so I kind of like got curious, searched what it was and I was like, this is exactly what I want to do. Um, so I just contacted people around me who were doing amazing things already, asked them if I could support them on their journeys and then started from there, got my own coach um, and then just started doing it. Awesome, sounds amazing. Yeah. So what is a life coach? Tell, tell <laughs> us what a life coach is and tell the audience. Yeah, I think I'm probably still trying to work out what a life coach is, but for me, I describe myself as a destiny help to someone. Um, so I would say it's like, I don't coach people who aren't motivated. I coach people who already know what they want and they're already driven towards it. But sometimes it helps on that journey, just have someone who's for you um, and someone who can help you create a bit more structure. Because I think the idea of dreams is like very euphoric when you come up with it but then two weeks later when things go wrong or two weeks later mm. when you find you don't have the money for that having someone just to help you build the structure to get there and also work on the mindset so for me kind of work on 80 percent helping the person get the mindset they need and then 20 percent like the strategy excellent and what did your parents say when you said actually law it's not necessarily what I want to do. I actually want to be a life coach. What was the response there? They did not understand it. Like, <laughs> um, I think they thought it was a hobby for a long time. So they kept just like calling it a hobby. Um, but the way that I am, if I've like decided I'm doing something, I'm a little bit hard headed. Um, so I kind of told them they kept thinking it was a hobby. And then I made the decision to um, take a year out after my second year and go to New York for three months. Awesome. Um, so I booked one way ticket there because that's all I had the money for and then it was then my parents were like oh wait like what is this um, so I had to explain it to them and I think when they realised that okay cool she's actually serious about this they kind of got a bit more on board and then kind of a year or so later in when I started producing results mm -hmm. that's when they're like okay like she's serious about this um, and she's getting results what's the best thing about being a life coach for you what's, what do you get the best thing um I think it's that thing again, like I love, um, I love dreams, like I love hearing someone talk about that, but even more, I love the fruition of it, like I love getting to reach the end of like a three month period and the person looks back and they can't believe what they've achieved just from like three months of like straight focus mm -hmm. and building on their dreams, so I say that's my favourite, my favourite thing. So the book, where did the book come from, how did that come about, what was yeah. it called? So the book is called The Becoming mm -hmm. and that's essentially, um, I guess my story about uh, of that period in my life kind of like the first two years at university mm -hmm. where everything was just going on and it kind of tells a story how I think on the journey of becoming um, it can feel like breaking like so many things feel like they've been taken from you but I found it was at that point the process of reaching rock bottom kind of started my becoming like starting a path to a life that I feel in alignment with um, a life that feels purposeful to me um, so it tells that story sure 
So on your entrepreneurial journey, where do you feel that you are? The beginning, middle, mm-hmm. like where do you feel you are as an entrepreneur? Yeah. Um, I'd say I'm at the beginning, but I'm kind of transitioning in the sense that uh, when I first started, the goal was, okay, just get a client, like cover this mm-hmm. month. Of course. But now I'm kind of thinking a bit more long term sure. about how I can build consistency um, and trying to build systems in place to allow me to maximize my impact and help more people. So that's kind of where and I'm scale. at. Yeah. yeah, and scale. Yeah, awesome. What is the big dream? You mentioned helping other people with their dreams. What's your dream? My dream? Um, well, I want to be known as someone who shapes kings. Like, I want to be known as someone who shapes, um, like, the leaders of tomorrow. Like, for me, that's what, like, brings me joy. Mm-hmm. But then I think in the process of that, that's how I plan to build my name as well. I truly believe like in abundance. I want an abundance of happiness, of money, of wealth. Um, but ultimately, yeah, I want to be known as someone like who shaped kings. So kings specifically? Kings and queens. Okay. But, like, okay. <laughs> I just mean people who are like world changers or like of tomorrow. Oh, the changes. Okay, fine. Yeah. So let's say someone comes to you, they're highly motivated, they lack maybe a bit of they need that accountability. Uh-huh. Um but give, I wanted to get some nuggets out of there. I want to like, mm-hmm. what would you tell them? What would they have to do? Mm-hmm. So I think the first thing, so the first thing I do with all of my clients is uh, we establish an intention. So one thing I always say is intention is the language of creation. So a lot of people kind of decide they kind of want something, but the minute that you decide, okay, cool, I'm going to do this, you can work a lot with that. So first of all, we get clear on, what's their intention, like what are you actually trying to achieve without thinking about all of the but this, but this, but that. Mm-hmm. We get clear on their intention. Um, and then I get them just to like do a brain dump of all of the things that could go wrong or all of the things they may not achieve it. And then we build a plan based on that. Because I think it's easy when you want to do something to just create like a long to-do list, but that's not actually that efficient. It's actually better to think about, okay, cool, what could go wrong? Mm-hmm. And then build steps towards that. So we do that um, and then we set like align committed action steps they're going to take consistently mm-hmm. um and i'm just on their back like reminding them of what they said they wanted mm-hmm. okay. um but it starts with intention like knowing that's what i'm working towards so mm-hmm. even if you miss that mark you end up way closer than if you kind of just had a fluffy idea of course of yeah yeah so how do you get on them onto them like right? so they're on their back do yeah. you like call them email <laughs> them how how is that done so we have um like a weekly session and during that, so at the end of each call, we set action steps. Obviously, I'll check that during the week. Um, but again, like as proactive, so I think different people have different styles. So before I take anyone on, like I give them like a long questionnaire asking them how they like to be coached and how they find it helpful to be coached. And I go based on that. For some people, it's like, hey, cool, daily reminder, I'll just text them every day. Have you done that? Other people, it's just like a nudge at the end of the meeting. So um, I try and be quite personalized in how I work with clients. It's really interesting. The world of coaching has changed so much in the last couple yeah. of years. Mm-hmm. Have you found that people, you know, when you've approached people, they're more open to the idea of having a coach? Actually, interestingly, um, I've realised that not many people think they need a coach. Okay. So I've learned um, not to sell coaching, but to present the result that people are looking for. The outcome, right? yeah. The mm-hmm. outcome, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. in and of itself, like, no one wants to pay, like, X amount of pounds like, for yeah. a coach. Um, but people do want to feel more structured in the way they're working towards their goal. Give us some more outcomes. Go on, buy some more. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> 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 Who do I know? Pressure. Um, yeah, okay, cool. So I think, number one, just feeling like you're progressing in life. Yeah. Because a lot of people feel like they're living the same year on rerun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so <laughs> yeah. feeling yeah, like... Yeah, they say, oh, wow, what did they say? Oh, oh 2000 and something. It's going to be gonna my year. It's going to be my year. Every year. Every January. Wait until 2000 and something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've heard that one. Yeah. yeah so you do fall in that trap sometimes mm, yeah. it's easy to yeah so just feeling like you're progressing um and then two like having more control of your life i think a lot of people just kind of live by a whim whether it's like within their finances or their business but actually feeling like you have control to kind of set the direction of your life um time management as well Con- not constantly feeling like you're rushed up your feet and you're taking care of everyone else's priorities uh those are a few, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that's cool. No, I like them. I, I just think it's so good because yeah. I think people, you're right, people don't think about 
the outcomes. They're concentrating on the, the fact they need a coach. Right. And maybe there's 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 a few people I've met along the way who just feel they should have a coach because mm. everyone else seems to have a coach. Uh-huh. And then there are people who are actually right who who need that support exactly. in getting to that final destination. Yeah, and I think it's always helpful to look at okay, cool, what am I actually trying to achieve? And then explore like what are the different things that could help bridge that gap. Because coaching isn't for everyone, mm. but it's appropriate for some people. So I think it's first thinking about what you want and then looking at what might be an appropriate vehicle to get you there. What's the biggest challenge you've had so far in this uh, entrepreneurial yeah. and coaching journey? Mm-hmm. Um, so like I mentioned, I started coaching when I was 20. Uh, and that was life co- like purely life coaching I was doing then. Uh, so I think it was more like a, a limited belief that I had. Mm. Um, so a lot of coaches aren't 20. Um, so I had that insecurity of like, why would anyone like pay me? Most of the people I was coaching to start with and still now are usually like two times my age. So I had that like limiting belief of like, why would anyone pay me to coach them? Kind of what do I know? And I remember there was one time when I went to, um, it was like a two day workshop. Um, and there was a lot of coaches there and a lot of them had had like years of experience and we had to do this exercise where you walk into the room and you get put in a group with um, 10 other strangers and you take it in turns and each person stands in the middle of the circle and then you have to say um, that person's most positive attributes um, and then most ineffective attributes and I remember going into that conference really aware of the fact that I was the youngest person there I didn't have much experience but I was like I'll just fake it, like I'll just go in and pretend like I know what I'm doing and yeah. Um, but out of like 10 people, eight people said, she seems to lack confidence, doesn't seem sure of herself. So I was like, okay, like if there's a limiting belief that you have, it always shows on the outside. Mm-hmm. So I think the biggest thing was doing the work to like believe in myself, like believe that didn't have to be a limitation. Okay, cool, maybe learn more, experience more, but it's as much of a limitation as I chose it to be. So when I did that work, I found that everyone else like followed that, like no one cares mm-hmm. how old you are, like if you get the result that they're looking for. Mm-hmm. So that was a big challenge. Um, and I guess like entrepreneur, entrepreneurialism, especially when you're starting out, isn't stable. Mm-hmm. And I always, that's the biggest thing that I value, especially with law, like stability. I know how much I'm getting, mm-hmm. how much progression. <laughs> yeah. So coming into this world where it's not certain, mm-hmm. or it's like, okay, cool, one month, your business could be like this and the next month it could look like that so adjusting my mindset to be like okay that's okay mm. <laughs> and working with it basically and your biggest regret give us something new your biggest mm-hmm. regret so far in, in your business journey in my business journey yeah. um and maybe while you're thinking about that maybe one thing that you could, if you could change one thing okay cool okay so i've got um the, re- the regret uh which I don't know, like I think I had to start there, but I would say pricing. Mm-hmm. So I think it was, it's easy to think, okay, cool, if I charge lower, people will pay for it. Yeah. So that's like when I started, I, like I charged the price, which was okay, cool, I'm comfortable with this, um, but it didn't work that way. Cause I realized the clients who, when I was charging lower, um, <laughs> they asked for a lot and they <laughs> didn't do the work. Um, yeah. They weren't committed, they'd cancel sessions. So I would say going back, um, I would do the mindset work with myself to work with my limitations and also charge a price that I feel happy to work at. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, charge a price that feels good to work mm-hmm. at and calls for a high standard from the people I'm working at because yeah. I enjoy it now, like with price on that. Yeah. So a price that kind of um, illustrates your value. Exactly, yeah, 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 rather than trying to suit it to yeah. like people. Yeah. And price. you're not alone because we've seen this time yeah. and time again. Absolutely. People are fearful of charging the right price because right. of their own self-belief limiting, limiting, beliefs. limiting beliefs but yeah okay so yeah. interesting such an important lesson pricing is so important. so important sometimes charging too low is detrimental yeah. to your business so it's, yeah. a, it's a really important lesson that definitely we want to drive home to the audience 100 you know, yeah pricing like I, just, is so important. I recorded um a podcast interview about how i tripled my prices literally overnight um and what was the response when you did that what was the response? What changed? So do you know what? So I had um, the day before I did it, it was because I had a consultation that was coming up. So I was preparing for it, and something in me was like, change your price maker. Um, and I went with the price that felt most in alignment. And I was so scared on that call. I thought when I said the price, you'd be like, what the hell? You said yes. Um, and I realized 
like if someone truly values what it is that you're bringing they'll find a way to do it mm-hmm. and if someone says it's about the money it's not really about the money they just don't find it valuable enough which is okay cool maybe i need to adjust or that's not my client so actually the, the response was better than i thought because i started attracting like clients who were actually committed as opposed to people who just i like, weren't really that serious because mm-hmm. when they pay the money they will essentially want to utilize the service right, right. Um, but yeah, it's so important because uh, mm-hmm. you know, it dictates your client base. 100%. Your price dictates your client base. Mm-hmm. The, the people that are spending less money, you might get more of them, but they are more unserious, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you have and less you end up doing more work, more running they're the around. One, they're the ones that <laughs> want every <laughs> little. Yeah. You call, you're supposed to call me at 901. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's 902. 902. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so important. Yeah. Hard lesson to. But I'm glad you, you know, this is something that so quickly in the journey that you mm-hmm. spotted. I'm super grateful for that, yeah. And what would you tell, I guess, you're still young, mm-hmm. right? you know, I don't know how old, but we say, we say you're still young. I'm young. Yeah. <laughs> well, how do we define young these days? Just checking if I'm oh, still sure, young. Oh, yeah. I'm, 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 I just want to know. You look young, like... I'll take it, that's really fine, young. moving on. And you're in your early 20s. Oh, 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 I see. Young. Okay. I've been doing this... 14 years, nearly as old as she is. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> I'm older than 14. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, if you could go back to you know, yeah. 18 year old self or 16 year old self and you can give yourself some best advice, mm-hmm. what would that look like? Um, okay, so it sounds cliche, but I would tell myself that anything's possible. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think we've kind of been conditioned to put limitations on what we can have. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think a lot of that is in part like with how you grew up. Um, so, for example, my mum's a nurse. I grew up with her working night shift. My like, dad's got a good job, but it was always, I only saw that getting like a nine to five job was the only way to achieve success. And I couldn't even dream of the fact that I could be making X amount and not have to like work for someone. Um, so, I would tell myself to put myself in environments that inspire you and show you just something different. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I'd say number one, like, believe in that anything is possible. Um, two, I would say pursue purpose as well. Because um, when you do that, you end up being passionate about it and you get paid for it. Mm. But, like, with law, like, I was just like, okay, cool, it'll kind of make me money. I like yeah. it. And, yeah. Pursue to purpose. purpose. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, actually, those are two excellent. We'll yeah. We'll <laughs> take that. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, so good. <laughs> so, so go ahead. Oh, sorry. So, what led you to the podcast then? So, we've gone through the, yes. the kind of the book journey, mm-hmm. the coaching. What what made you decide to do a podcast? And what's it called? Tell the audience what it's called. So, the podcast is called the Twenty Something Coach Podcast, um, and I started that because I remember when I started my coaching journey. Uh, one, there wasn't a lot of people that looked like me who were coaches. Like, I remember googling, and I was like. These are like all old people that like I can't relate to. Yeah. Um, so I did it for for that girl, like just to have someone to show that it's actually possible. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was a lot of stuff that I had to kind of figure out, mm-hmm. which were unique to being a young coach. Yes. Like again, I mentioned the limitation of being like a rape is a thing, mm-hmm. um, feeling like you can charge that despite maybe a lack of experience mm-hmm. and realizing that you should charge based on results instead. Um, so I basically just did it because I, I, like, I still get quite a lot of questions from people who were in their 20s, like, how did you do this? How did you do that? Um, so I just wanted to answer them and I wanted to do a podcast that I wish I had when I was starting my journey. Yeah. Okay. And how old are you now? I'm 22. Okay, I love this. 22. Yeah. This is excellent. <laughs> <laughs> so we called it the 20-something podcast. So when yeah. you're... Thirty something. We're just gonna just. Uh, <laughs> I have to cross that bridge. You just, you just interview the twenty somethings. You just keep works, interviewing right. them. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's fine. We're gonna work it out. The work. Yeah. Yeah. Cross that bridge. That's not like this. Net, this is a great brand. Have you trademarked this brand? I haven't yet. You gotta get on it because they got right. sharks in our network. They keep that right. Before the steps out. Before the steps out. Because that's a that's a, an that's event. Great. An event brand name. Mm. Yeah, we call it the future. We can yeah. make it better 20-something. If it doesn't exist. I'm making mental notes. I see millions. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Because there's awesome. so many 20-somethings out there who, you know, I'm not a big fan of the idea that, you know, there's there's definitive 
ages that you need to achieve certain things. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's the truth. No. I think everyone has their own journey. Yeah. But it's really so many 20 somethings that need that inspiration or want to do something yeah. and achieve it in their 20s. I would love to hear that and mm-hmm. love to go to events with other 20 somethings that want to do big things. Definitely. So. And I wanted to just keep it real as well because I think um, a lot of the information I found about coaching is like, oh, okay, cool, how many six figures in six months? Um, and that's like amazing like if that's your story mm. um it's not even a story it wasn't my story i want to talk about like the failed launches as well absolutely the times when clients said no just the like stuff that people don't talk mm-hmm. about yeah um like to prepare people for it when i started i was like oh, i can make this much in a month but it doesn't mm-hmm. always work like that um so yeah there's some great stories out there isn't there just great stories about making you know loads of money in a short period of time mm-hmm. but actually the leg so. work it's yeah, good. I mean it's a great advertising ploy. I don't know if it's <laughs> ever true. But I love the legwork that goes into it. That story is the story that we need to tell, right? Mm-hmm. That's what people need to hear about how to actually get ahead and yeah. focus and just be determined and passionate. Mm-hmm. And just to keep overcoming the obstacle, that's the biggest thing. I think I found in entrepreneurialism that just that ability to take a knot, keep going, take a knot, keep going. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna switch this round for a second. Cool. You can ask us a question. Oh. That's how you know our interviews mm. are not planned, they're not prepared. No, yeah. <laughs> we go in so live and direct and we ask the questions that you guys want to know. So I wasn't okay. expecting that either. So yeah. it was really, that was good. That's all well, comes from well, here. Who said that doesn't have a brain? Uh-huh. <laughs> no one. Who said no one? It might have been me. <laughs> okay. okay. Ready? What is the most exciting thing that you guys are working towards right now? Do you know what? That question is so interesting because we work on so many exciting things. Right. And we almost are desensitized by the amazing things that we get to work on. And we're blessed by the things we get to work on. Mm -hmm. And I was only talking about this yesterday because I was doing a post on Instagram about Bianca and I was looking at her resume Mm -hmm. and I was looking at some of the announcements that we have coming up Mm -hmm. and I was like, ooh, this is crazy. (laughs) So to maybe try and answer the question more specifically, Uh um, we have uh, another book which we're launching. We're going to be announcing that near enough to time. It will probably have been announced by the time this comes out. Mm -hmm. Um, Bianca's just finished filming a TV show. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, I think I saw that in the yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's that's amazing, which leads on to various other different bits and pieces. And these are just like this is we're talking about this is the last this is the last seven days and the next seven days. Wow. Mm, so. And how do you stay like motivated to keep going? Because obviously you guys have both reached like a level of success, but what's that thing that causes you to keep like wanting to create like books? Or Legacy. Like, okay. I think ultimately it's a passion. We we're passionate mm-hmm. about helping people, similar to you, helping people mm-hmm. define what their goals and dreams are and yeah. making them uh, a reality and providing them with actionable content. Mm-hmm. And I think if it interviews like this, yeah. it's actionable content, showing people it's possible, they mm-hmm. can do it, they have a purpose, they have a passion, it's all possible. Yeah. So I think that, um, and from the legacy perspective, you know, just inspiring people to do whatever they want to and being able to look back and say, actually, as a result of our hard work, it's not just benefited us. Yeah. We've not just created something that's helped our pockets. Mm-hmm. We're actually helping other people. Mm-hmm. And that, for me, is that's what defines the things I'm passionate about. Mm-hmm. Like the TV show, that's not about me. That's about helping other people with their mm-hmm. finance and their and business. The mm-hmm. book wasn't about us. It was about mm-hmm. helping people understand how to be great in business. You know, so yeah. it's, it's that. It's a legacy. I love that. Yeah. And just to add to that, I mean, um, you know, some of my goals are... One of my goals is to create, help create like 100 millionaires. Mm-hmm. That is one of the things that I yeah. want to. I've, I've extended my retirement for this. So, Have you? Yes. Very kind of you. So, uh, <laughs> so, so, you know, we go, guys have got to be hungry and work hard, right? Um, but yeah, as you say, you know, the, the legacy of what we want to do. Mm-hmm. And do you know what? Something that I didn't really feel that I was going to get from it is the sense of fulfillment right. that when people actually you actually seeing the transformation from where they start Mm -hmm. to where they are now Mm -hmm. and the things that they're doing in their business and they're not making the mistakes that we made five years ago ten years Mm -hmm. ago that fulfillment is unmeasurable Mm -hmm. when i get 
testimony or feedback or yeah. update from that other, email that from message. mentees. Yeah. 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 I've just improved my credit file based on watching your video or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Like that is like it's literally mm-hmm. changing lives. Mm-hmm. And you're like, wow. And people say that it's changed their life. So there's some of the things mm-hmm. that you think probably speak about this all day. But Amazing. I'm glad I got to ask the question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your legacy? What do you want for the future? Oh, my legacy. Um, I think I want to break the bounds of what's possible. Like, I'm always saying this, but I just feel like um, it's like our turn for a seat at the table, like girls that look like me. Um, so I was born, my parents were born in Zimbabwe. I was born in Zimbabwe. Um, and my parents came in literally with like a suitcase each and like one pair of shoes each. Um, so the idea of just like breaking the bounds of what's possible and continuing to expand that, like really, really excites me. So yeah. I like that. So just redefining impossible. Exactly. That's it. Yeah. Possible is nothing. Impossible is nothing. That's good. So what's next for you and your business? Okay. Um, so next for me and my business, um, I'm working on a second book, which is published. And my first book was um, self-published. And um, with the second book, I have a new York publisher, which is amazing. And amazing. Come on. Yeah. You said that. <laughs> so like, no, I've just got this you know, publisher. Publisher. I still can't really. <laughs> I'm still book. like. How did you get that? How did you get that publishing deal? Okay, so interesting. Um, so I used to work in Zimbabwe. Okay, so interestingly, um, when I was in New York, I did a lot of, I had my book, and half of it's actually poetry, like short poems. Um, and I would pretty much go to spoken word events, perform poetry and sell my books. And that's kind of how I was getting by. Um, and my goal was to like, just get the book out. Like I had, I have a vision board and I had a okay, cool bestseller on there. And I was just trying to do like what I could, but not much came from it, but I still held on to that intention that, okay, cool. Somehow, somewhere I want to be a bestseller, but mm-hmm. I'm not yet, but I'm on the road. Um, so cool, left New York, nothing happened. Um, and then in April, Randomly, I ended up going to New York. We were in Florida, Florida and there was cheap flights. So I thought I'll see a few of my friends. Um, and then I was on the plane, and something in me was just like messaged this guy here in the publishing house in New York. And I asked him like for a meeting. Like my intuition just like told me to go. We had the meeting. Um, talked to him about a concept that I did have. Again, like nothing really came from it. Um, but I was still trusting. My intention was there. Um, and then a few weeks later, he checked out like some of my stuff. Um, and he asked me like if I would like write a book for them. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. And you found him on LinkedIn or it was Instagram. Yeah. Instagram. Oh, there you go. That's, this is this is how media. you use social media <laughs> with, with social intention. Media. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. So the book and he said one other thing. Um so the book, um, and then also building um an online course helping other twenty something year olds on how to get their first client. But the significance isn't the first client, it is knowing how to do it because I actually got my first client quite easily but it felt like it was a fluke I didn't know how to onboard them probably like I was like stressed with the money but showing them everything so the processes that you need to have it in place to properly onboard a client um how to market it like how to handle like that period when someone inquires them being your client um so building that and then just continuing to to grow the podcast and my speaking career awesome so, Mayfair, where would our wonderful audience find you? So, you can find me on Instagram pretty much every day. <laughs> um, that's underscore Mayfair N, underscore Mayfair N on Twitter as well, and YouTube, um, and my podcast, The 20 Something Coach, um, is on pretty much all streaming platforms. And then I have my website, which is MayfairN.com, if you want to find out more about coaching or speaking. And what's the one thing you would like to tell our listeners to do or think about moving forward? Oh, Okay, I would say be intentional with the way that you spend your time uh, because I think it's easy to have big dreams about what you want to achieve at the end of the year. But you have to realise that your years are just made up of months, which are made up of days, which are made up of like minutes, which are made up of seconds. So be intentional and purposeful about how you spend that minute. Fantastic. I love that. I'm sorry. (laughs) 22 i love this i absolutely love it it's great i just i don't i don't anyway moving on guys thank you so much for listening um an absolute pleasure to speak to you mayfair thank you very much for coming in so she's been mayfair i'm bianca and i'm byron see you next time bye